will that be? Oh, it's Ken Ermston. next honoree thought his career was over in 1979 after Ballroom. After all, he was on Broadway with Gwen Verdon in the 50s, all over the Great White Way in the 60s, and in Pippin in the 70s. But then he auditioned for a show he thought he would never get, and he ended up working again for another 15 years. That show was a Vida. And first up to speak about Ken is the choreographer of that show. We all love him. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Fuller. so long. <laughs> Somebody straighten this microphone out. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I am too uh, insecure to speak extemporaneously. So I will, I wrote something out. Anyway, I, I, I've known Ken and admired him and his work for many years before I really knew him. Uh, having seen him perform in Bali, Pippin, and Ballroom. Although his Broadway career went back many shows before that, <coughs> according to Broadway.internet or whatever it is, Guys and Dolls, Make a Wish, Top Banana, John Murray Anderson's Almanac, Silk Stockings, O Captain, Tenderloin, Lovely ladies, kind gentlemen. That's 12 Broadway shows and a dance career that spanned 33 years. Uh, it's pretty lengthy for a dance career. Of course, his career went on for many more years after <clears throat> he stopped performing. That's when I really got to know him. Uh, he was dance captain in swing for the original LA Company of Medina. <coughs> Uh, which uh, they already said I forgot, and I was truly lucky to have him. He was the only, only, not only a terrific swing, but a great dance captain because of his professionalism and his human <coughs> skills. He went on to stage many companies of Evita, not only in this country, but all over the world. Uh, I just want him to tell you what countries did you do it in, Ken? I can't even keep track. Uh, I did it in um, two different versions uh, of Spanish, one in Mexico City and the other of a version that came from Spain, a company from Barcelona. I also did it in Holland. I did it in Tel Aviv in Hebrew. I did it in Turkish in Istanbul and other places there. I did it in German, in uh, a couple of different companies of, uh, in Germany. Uh, then I also did all the American bus and truck uh, <laughs> tours. I did a whole American tour that played all the capitals of Canada. I also did Wolfgang Bosch's uh, American companies that played all over Europe, uh, including Singapore, then I did seven touring companies in England. Uh, every summer I used to go to England and rehearse for two weeks and then they would do another nine month tour and I'd come back the next year and do it there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That was about it. Thank you. <laughs> So my final comment is simply to say I want to thank you for helping to extend my career. I love you.
Italian, you used to call that a good time girl. But in all those languages, you did it? I always had an interpreter. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I knew how to get along in a hotel and, and restaurant. Can you see me after the show? Okay. Well, not only do we have honorees flying in from all over, uh, from the West Coast, we have members who want to honor our honorees. Now, here to say a few words about Ken is a dancer from Pippin, Diane Duncan. Hi, I'm Diane, and I came out from California. Ken uh, had them send me an invitation, and he then said, well, I never expected you to come. <laughs> <laughs> but John Sotegas asked me to say something funny about Ken, and I thought, well, I need to ask other people. I mean, so many people have worked with him over the years, and I can't just do this on my own. So I called some friends for some help, and this is what we've come up with. Something Funny About Ken Erston by Diane Duncan and Friends. <laughs> He's so low key and professional. How can you say something funny about Ken? <laughs> Another friend offered. I don't remember anything funny that he said to them. He's so conservative. Or another one, this is a really good one. He's not a practical joker and not that out there with the staff. Or here's another good one. Funny things about Ken? I don't know. <laughs> now, on to the good stuff, because that was opener was for Ken's sake, since his brother, Father Ben Ernston, who is a Jesuit priest at Xavier in Cincinnati, is here. <laughs> one more funny thing about Ken, though. This is some of the really good stuff, before I get to the good stuff. Funny is not what I'd say about Ken Ernston. He is so serious and dry, so dry. <laughs> well, one time I do remember my se myself that Ken was not so dry because he does love a good party, as we know. But we all know he doesn't drink. That's for your sake, Father Ben. <laughs> when Pippin was in Chicago, I threw a birthday party for a castmate in my tiny, tiny little apartment. Everyone came. The trouble is nobody left. Nobody made it out of the building because it was a tequila shooter party. And finally, the gossip was that Ken actually left a whole lot more than he came in with. Another party that Ken is famous for was the great Evita Halloween party. In that wonderful, glamorous, better than being in Paris, American city, Birmingham, Alabama, <laughs> on October 30th, 1983. Ken arrived in a kid-sized, Kmart Halloween costume. You know the kind with binoculars on the chest and the Eagle Force badge painted on and a gorilla war type belt painted on the costume and a kid's mask. Well, it didn't quite fit a kid's large. That didn't stop Ken, the show's gonna go on. So he just duct taped up the back and he, he had no problem walking around the party with his blue underwear showing down the back in his combat boots. <laughs> Now, Ken was into costumes and into shoes, and those were really important to have ready and to be in place for all those quick changes, which he's really, really good at quick changes. He was meticulous about those shoes and those quick changes, <laughs> and which a young boy on Pippin realized that, and I think just between you and me, to try to get a smile on Ken's face every now and again, he, and just to make Ken laugh while he was being serious about being on stage, Seamus used to hide Ken's shoes before the quick changes, or he'd put the right one on the left, or put them upside down, or he'd hide things in them, or little notes. And, but Ken didn't let that stop him. He always made it on stage on time. And one of the best quick change stories that we all seem to come up with about Ken is that he, you know, in quick changes, you know you're backstage, you're stripping down almost nothing, and in Pippin, I don't think any of us realized it back then, but we were wearing almost nothing. It was, you know, G-strings and all of these kind of things. So he, in fact, um, and I mentioned everybody, I haven't mentioned yet, that Ken was really famous for his great six pack. And I don't mean beer, because remember, Father Ben, he doesn't drink. <laughs> Ken had the best chest on Broadway, other than John Minio's famous chest in Pippin, his bare chest, that, and that was the role that Ken went into when he joined Pippin years later. 
So in fact, in 1977, at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., Ken had stepped into a little tiny quick change area and to change into his gold lame bikini and his bare chest and his white face and his blackened eyes and his little pirate scarf on his head to get ready for the bolero. And yet he didn't realize the door had locked behind him and he had stepped into the Hall of Flags at the Kennedy Center <laughs> and it was a matinee and everybody and all the tourists were there and wondering what on earth this person, who is this person in white face? And in his Ken Armston way, he very nicely did not panic, but said, please, does somebody know where the stage is? <laughs> And later what he said was, he just kept thinking that he couldn't imagine Sheila leaping to her grand leap across the stage and with no one being there to catch her after the leap. <laughs> so people couldn't come up with a lot of funny things, but they had much more important things to say. Elegant, professional, gentle, unbelievably consistent, masculine presence on stage, the consummate posse dancer, pure style on stage, with a twinkle in his eye, expecting high standards from us all, a beautiful human being. We were all just young kids back then, trying to do our best, and just trying to be loved. And Ken gave us that. The gift of himself each and every day, clear love and actual concern and discipline to make us be our best. He made us be our best. I am grateful he's my friend. And very quickly, um, most of you know, besides Chicago being my favorite show, I wrote my thesis on Bob Fosse. So I was crazy about Pippin as well as Chicago and I was consumed by it. Well, when I first saw Pippin, and I saw this hot guy in this outfit, and it was after John Midian, you know, um, I just, I thought he was phenomenal. And uh, when I met him again, when I started with Dance Over 40, he immediately started volunteering and helping us. He was in our memo closet, he performed for us. Whenever I call him to ask him to do something, he's there. Uh, he's been a great instrumental um, member of Dance Over 40, and uh, I love him dearly. Ken Emerson. Yeah.